Hi, my name is James Tracy. I'm a master club fitter here at Second Swing, and in today's video, we're going to talk about one of those miss hits out there, and that's a miss to the left. I'm a right-handed player, so I'm seeing a left miss in my world as a pull. Or it's a hook. It's a ball that's curving to the left, and the dreaded left-to-left -left miss is another one we're going to talk about today, and some of the reasons why you might see your golf ball missing left of target. As a club fitter, my focus when trying to solve that symptom is certainly trying to fix the equipment. Obviously, your golf swing is going to influence a lot of parts of your ball flight and the tendencies that you have. So as a club fitter, instead of changing your swing, I'm trying to just ensure that you are the only thing causing the ball to go to the left. And there's no features of that golf club that's making your symptoms worse. You know, Try to complement your tendencies with the right golf club. So let's talk about drivers first. What makes the golf ball go to the left? And like I said earlier, there's two types of left. There's a ball that just starts to the left, kind of a pull. And then there's a golf ball that's curving right to left. And there can be different causes for that. A pull, a lot of that comes from the swing. So to go against my club fitter mentality, talk about the swing for a second. I would say a majority of golfers have a club path that's out to in. If you're a baseball player, you're swinging more to left field. You're a pull hitter. So as that club path moves right to left over the top of the plane and a little bit across the ball from right to left, those types of golfers generally are going to start the ball to the left of their target. Most of those players also have an open club face. So that ball that might start left curves back to the right, uh, sometimes a little bit too much. We talked about that tendency in a previous video. But if you're a player that has a little out to end swing and tends to pull everything to the left, that means one, you're doing a good job of releasing the club face. But unfortunately, your club path is moving a little bit too far to the left. Trying to fix that with the golf club is tricky. But one thing that we look at to make sure that that, lot, that left starting direction is starting the right amount to the left based on your swing is to look at the lie angle of the golf club. So in drivers, for example, the lie angle is critically important. Most golfers don't think about lie angle outside of maybe your irons. But in a driver, there are multiple lie angles, even from the same company. Take Callaway and Ping, for example. In Callaway's new driver, the Maverick, the Maverick Max, and the standard Maverick have more upright lie angles than their Sub-Zero model. As a result, that Sub-Zero model tends to start a little bit more to the right due to the flatter lie angle and some internal weighting differences. Ping's the same way. They have SF Tech models, more upright, more heel-weighted center of gravity. That ball's going to start more to the left. Their LS Tech model, low spin tech, um, is going to start a little bit more to the right. Part of that's due to a flatter lie angle. I have a six iron in my hand. Players that are pulling the ball in a club fitting, we're going to look at the lie angle. If that lie angle is too upright, the toe is up in the air, causing the ball to pull to the left, we might try a little flatter lie angle. So lie angle is definitely, as a club fitter, one of the recipes that we, we look to to try to solve potentially a left miss for the player. Just like in my missing right video, the other cause is the club face. You know, players that do a little too much of a good thing at allowing that club face to over rotate. So those two drivers that I mentioned, a Callaway Sub Zero model or a Ping LS Tech model, both of those drivers have a more toe weighted center of gravity compared to the other models in the line. And when you pull that weight away from the hosel and you move it more towards the toe, it slows down the rate of closure and influences the gearing that you see on off center hits. That could cause the ball to curve from right to left. So those are two good recipes, head style wise, to influence the shot to start a little bit straighter. Irons are the same way. Head design, lie angle can certainly influence a starting direction or a curve to the left. So testing lie angles, looking at offset, looking at where you're hitting it on the face. Those are things we're trying to do in a fitting to counteract a left miss. Wedges apply to irons as well. If you play a flatter lie angle in your irons, you should definitely play a flatter lie angle in your wedges. Some of your highest lofted wedges, if you're around the greens and you tend to pull your chip shots. There's a lot of players that prefer a little bit flatter lie angle in their green side wedge because they're choking down on the club. They might be affecting their posture a little bit as they get closer to the ball. And they aren't taking a full swing at full speed. So that can influence the dynamic lie angle of the shot uh, when you're bringing that, that wedge into the ball from 30 yards from the green. So considering a flatter lie angle in your lob or your sand wedge might be a great idea if you tend to miss to the left as you get closer to the green. And don't forget about your putter. If you're missing putts to the left, those are things that could be the golfer, but if we're trying to solve that with equipment, we're looking at things like the lie angle, right? An upright putter 
might start that ball a little bit more to the left. A putter that's over rotated and the face is closed, well that's going to pull the ball to the left. So looking at toe hang, looking at alignment, looking at the weight of the putter, all of those things can influence how you bring the club face to the ball and where you're striking it on the face, which will determine whether your putt starts on line, starts a little bit to the left, or starts a little bit to the right. So be thinking about the club head first when you're trying to solve big left misses. That's going to be the biggest lever that you can pull to try to influence a left miss. And then also to looking at the shaft. The shaft is not as predictable as the head, but there are some ways to solve a left miss by looking at shaft length, shaft weight, finding the right flex, and even the end of that grip, or end of that shaft rather, looking at the grip size. A left miss sometimes, especially if you have big paws, if I shake someone's hand and their hand engulfs mine and I see that they're playing a standard size grip and then they got a miss to the left and they're over rotating the club, ding ding, I'm thinking about recommending a bigger grip. So looking at the grip size to match your hand size and your ball flight is another way that we can start to predict a little better face angle, a little better impact position for you uh, with the properly fitted set of golf clubs. So if you have a left miss and you're curious on can I solve that with my equipment or is my equipment potentially making that symptom a little bit worse, reach out to us here at secondswing.com or schedule an online or phone fitting today with one of the master club fitters like myself and we can walk you through some of those solves that can help fix your left miss. Thanks, have a great day.